So now you know that the most recent sets are weighable. Guys, I'm not calling anyone out on naming and shaming, but if you think about it right, the only people who are offended with it being public knowledge that booster packs are weighable are people who will benefit from the public not knowing. So what are they trying to hide? But seriously, weighable packs is a pretty major issue. And it doesn't matter when or who puts out a video showing packs are weighable because sadly, people have already been doing it for years. Heck, pack weighing goes back all the way to the what see era. I guess my gripe is more with those who use this information to gain an unfair advantage. The most blatant behavior of all being using a weighing scale to weigh packs. And I'm not surprised if there's people who have already done this and swept all the light brilliant stars pack from 7-Eleven across Singapore after the first few days they were released. And as shared here by Aaron from Pokemon Unboxed, people are weighing sleeve boosters as well. So it's pretty sad and infuriating. Unfortunately, when people do this, they are gaining and profiteering at many collectors' expense. Imagine going to a store after a hard day at work or school just to buy some filtered packs or getting a cheap deal for loose packs online only to find out they were filtered. It definitely leaves a bad mark in the hobby and we could go on in depth about the long-term ramifications if this continue but I want to keep this video short and spend more time talking about how you can stay informed when buying loose booster packs. Guys, when I do content, it's never to tell people how to think but to keep you informed and aware so that you can make an informed decision yourself. Now, if you ask me whether this problem can be solved, it goes all the way up to the Pokemon company's level. Whether they know or whether they are listening, we'll never know. But I think this is an issue that will come out every once in a while, similar to missed cards, print lines, fake white coat, so on and so forth. So it will never truly be solved if there's so much growing demand for products. Now, what about hand weighing? So if you ask me right, I'm actually fine with hand weighing. I mean, I think it's actually a skill. I've tried to hand weigh, but I think my hands are just not gifted with this talent. I mean, I can feel packs that I thought was light, but it turns out super heavy and vice versa. So I'm actually fine with it. I mean, if you actually spend that much time, money and effort to practice until you can tell the the weight of the pack by just holding it on your hands Good job, man. I mean, it's kind of like a mental sum versus using a calculator in a non-calculator math paper. The latter is called cheating. So I think it's still generally acceptable and definitely not as scummy of a behavior as blatantly bringing weighing scales. So should we stop buying packs altogether? Of course not. There's this term called caveat emptor, which is a Latin phrase meaning let the buyer beware. So this can be applied to Pokemon cards as well. Be careful when you're buying loose packs from say half open booster box you find outside or when you see deals on eBay or carousel they are too good to be true they probably are or simply buy from trusted sources like the Pokemon Center or local game stores with good reputation and I think while we can never put a stop to this behavior entirely local shops and distributors can help to enforce and reinforce by simply not allowing customers to use wing scales shops like Challenger Popular Don Don Donkey Toys R Us and 7-Eleven can simply place a sign saying no digital wing scales allowed, limited quantities allowed. And I think it's important for the management of these new players or non-TCG shops to know because these affirmation stores are not privy to what's going on. And I think that's where majority of the pack filtering action is happening. And it's the same exact situation when scalpers were wiping clean the sleep boosters as well. That's why seriously, I feel that they play the biggest factor in controlling these unwanted behavior, but that's just my two cents. I don't think a local trading card shop sells filter packs and I think in fact most of them condone this behavior and run their businesses in an ethical and transparent manner but there may be black sheep. So once again, practice caveat emptor. Whether you're a shop or a streamer, if you're conducting your business transparently, you should have no issues at all with the public knowing that brilliant stars or whichever set can be weighed. In fact, you should rejoice as it will weed out all the black sheep. So to conclude this short video right, I feel that it takes a collective effort on all levels to effectively weed out weighing and filtering packs until the Pokemon company improves on the consistency in the weight of their products. But what do you guys think? Do you agree or disagree? If you're from the West, does this happen in your country as well? Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. As always guys, smash that like button and just a heads up for the next video, we're gonna do some pack hunting outside once again. So make sure you subscribe and turn on that bell notifications to not miss out. Guys, this is what I'm gonna do if I see someone using weighing scale outside. <laughs> oh wow!